Hello, Frizzle fellas. I am a fan of urban fantasy, and many times now, someone has recommended the Sandman Slim series to me. But I was never super excited to read it because it would always be recommended to me like this. You know, Sandman Slim series, it's really good, but I'm not sure if you'll like it because it's like really violent and you know, vulgar and gory, whatever, and I don't know, maybe you'll like it, maybe give it a try. It's really violent. And somehow this didn't sell me on the series. You know, it didn't really get me super excited to read something if that is how it was pitched to me. But I finally got around to reading it, mostly because of this big urban fantasy project that I'm working on. And wow, why didn't anyone pitch this to me better? You know how I would pitch this series to someone if I was recommending it to someone? Our main character, James Stark, was unfairly exiled to literal hell for over a decade. He is now broken out and he is on a revenge killing quest for all the people who put him in there. And then I would follow it up by saying, this series has some of the best, most detail-oriented, fun character work I have ever read. Sandman Slim. Because his character is so messed up in so many interesting ways, and it's all internally and thematically consistent. So let's break that down. I'm very excited for this one. The actual plot of this book is fine. It serves as our driving engine force that we know that Stark has a goal, and he's working towards that, and that is killing the people who put him in hell. But the most exciting parts of the plot to me weren't as he was tracking down these evil people. It was when him making decisions reflected his character growth and change, which is very subtle but totally happens, because you get such a firm sense of who he is through those changes and through those little decisions that he's making. Let's give an example. When he first gets back from hell, his social skills are, um, not calibrated for Earth any longer. It feels like every other sentence out of his mouth is either a very overt threat or a kind of subtle threat, but either way, he's behaving very threateningly. And even when he's interacting with his old friends that he hasn't seen for many years, he's still kind of threatening them and definitely not very good at putting them at ease. Like, no, I'm not actually gonna hurt you. It kind of feels like he is. So even that little thing, that over the course of the book, he gets a little better at speaking kindly to his friends, even that was so enjoyable to read because you are right here in Stark's shoes and you feel so bad for him because you know exactly how he got so messed up. Stark's little victories in this plot include such moments as actually saying sorry to someone who he offended, or behaving a little less threateningly. And this character is just so believable. If you were thinking, how do we write someone who has just spent a decade in hell, fought in gladiator rings, became an assassin, tortured, etc., what would they be like? This is that answer. And Stark's psyche is a very abused person. He's come back to Earth. This is what he's been working towards. He really wanted to come back, both for his revenge and also just because hell is terrible. Surprise. But then now that he's back on Earth and he doesn't really have a good place to go, a place to stay, he doesn't have a day-to-day -day routine. He's not even sure how he can keep up these friendships that he keeps messing up. And he keeps yearning to just go back to hell, even though he knows that's a bad place. He's not going to be really happy there, but at least it's a familiar unhappy. At least it's something that he can deal with and find day-to-day -day contentment in. Because he did find that, and now he's back in an unusual place, and even if it is definitely better than his old place, he wants to go back to being abused, because that's just where his coping mechanisms are calibrated for. Because Stark only has pretty much one coping mechanism left, and that is getting in violent fights to the death. Pretty much any time Stark is presented with a problem, his first instinct is to fight it to the death violently. And I'm sure that worked real good in hell, but um, in the real world, that isn't socially acceptable. <laughs> which is part of why he now feels kind of like a fish out of water, because this is his first instinct and he has to kind of work to do anything better than that. He has to work to be a good friend or a non-threatening neighbor or just a hero sometimes. And he is so addicted to this violent lifestyle. When he's feeling anxious, he goes and picks a fight with people because that is how he releases tension. It's the only defense mechanism, the only coping mechanism he has left. The only one that really worked for him for the past decade, so he's still got it. And this makes him very anti-hero. His goal is not to go out and save the world, but he might inadvertently do that while he's on his revenge quest, and he's fine with that. He's not a super kind person, he's not a soft person in any sense of the word, but you still want to root for him because the character is crafted so 
fine detail work-wise. Because every part of his personality feels like him. It doesn't feel like he's ever doing something just to serve the plot. It's just the plot is happening because that is who Sandman Slim James Stark is. I laughed at so many points in this book. It is funny. The character development and work in this book is top tier. It is also violent, but every instance of violence feels like it's serving the plot and the character and helping you understand the world. By the way, the world building of Hell is also very cool. I like it a lot and I'm excited to figure out more about it. So if that sounds like a fun book for you, please go check it out. And then let me know what you think about this book. If you made it to the end of the video, comment with a key emoji and thank you for watching.